is Dina Does. I'm Dina, and I know a little bit about a lot, but I want to know more. So join me on this path to self-discovery. Today on Dina Does, we're doing self-confidence. And my guest today is Gala Darling, who has plenty of self-confidence. She is a high vibe honey, an author, a tapping queen. You're really everything. Welcome, Gala. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. I think this is going to be amazing. It is going to be amazing. Um, so for the viewers and listeners who have not had the pleasure of getting to know you yet, you will definitely want to follow Gala in her vortex of magic that she creates. Um, we met at a um, at an astrology retreat in Tulum. Yes. Feels like a million years ago now. It, and you know what? It was lifetimes ago for me because my life was so different then. And it was really this beginning of this new chapter for me. And it was a scary, scary time. And I remember we were both waiting. We were the last two waiting for our flights. Everyone else had left. And um, we were talking about divorce. You were married at the time and I was going through divorce and um, we kind of got on the subject of, of marriage and what works and what doesn't work. And I remember seeing you and seeing myself years before. Mm. Um, and I gave you some, I don't know if it was marriage advice or divorce advice, but <laughs> we definitely had a conversation. <laughs> well, that whole trip was so fascinating because I really went on that retreat with the intention of figuring out whether I should stay in my marriage or not. And the thing that was so interesting to me about that retreat is that almost every woman on that retreat had been divorced and they were living their best lives. And I thought, you know, we get to define what divorce means to us. And I could, some people see that as like the ending, a failure, they close down. And some people see it as a chance for a new life and a rebirth. And that was really how I took it. And, you know, there's nothing, I have nothing against my ex-husband. It just wasn't right for us. And I'm so glad that I made that decision, even though yeah. it was very hard at the time. And there, there's nothing fun about divorce ever, no. ever. No. Um, and there's so many topics we could talk to you about, and I want to have you back on several times so we can cover it all. Okay. But today we're going to be talking about, you know, self-confidence because I, I did a little questionnaire on my Instagram and a lot of people were saying, well, Dina, how do you say self so self-confident. It's funny because I'm not that self-confident, but, um, you know, you exude it from every little pore of your skin and every <laughs> cell of your beautiful goddess body. And it's funny because when I like low key, I'm definitely in touch with my sexuality and I feel sexy, uh, most of the time because I'm very tapped into divine energy. Mm -hmm. But when I get dressed up, that's when I feel really uncomfortable when I put the heels on and the makeup on and the outfits. So I'm trying to figure out what that is because like, I can't wait to get home and strip it all off and feel like me again. Um, so you are like hmm. the poster child for beautiful, sexy, pink hair, makeup, <laughs> lashes. Like I want to, I want to learn from you for that because it, it does make me feel so uncomfortable. So how did your self-confidence journey begin? Well, when you were saying that, I couldn't help but think that maybe the reason that you don't enjoy doing that and the reason it makes you feel uncomfortable is because it feels like you're doing that for someone else or for, you know, everyone else to take you in rather than I'm sure when you feel sexy and sensual and connected, you're, that's about you. You're doing it for yourself and there's no judgment. You don't feel like you're being observed by others. You're just literally in your own skin. Yeah. Yeah. That resonates for sure. Um, but when I think about fashion, mm. I don't think about, like, I think we do fashion for women um, or for mm -hmm. ourselves, you know, as far as that, but I guess maybe that's where the discomfort lies is um, there is something about the pole dancing and all of that, that is very um, usually traditionally for the man rather mm -hmm. than for yourself. Mm -hmm. So you seem to be so comfortable with it and embody it for you. So when did that start? Was it something you've always had or is that something you needed to work into? I think confidence generally is something that I confidence in expressing myself and being different. Like, you know, I have a story about myself that like I'm different and I've sort of 
learned to use that to my advantage. But that really started for me when I was about 13 in junior high school, when I was befriended by a group of like cool girls. And we were friends for a few months, I guess. And then one day they like stopped taking my calls, pretend that I didn't exist. And that was devastating for me. And in that moment, I decided that I wasn't going to try to act a certain way to please other people because other people were fickle and there was no safety in that. And I decided I wanted to do what made me feel authentically good. And shortly what thereafter, was I was about 13. I was very young. Oh my gosh. And um, shortly thereafter, I discovered the goth subculture, which I was really into. And I would wear like a corset and stripy tights. And my favorite item of clothing was a pair of silver plastic angel wings that I bought from like a novelty store. And I would wear these every weekend into the town. And I grew up in a tiny town in New Zealand. So it was, you know, unusual. (laughs) Like I didn't live in New York City or anything. And I really realized that when you're confident enough to be yourself and express what you feel like expressing, people respond so positively to that because they don't see it very often. And I find that the zanier my outfit is, the more positive feedback I actually get from other people. And I think part of the reason I'm getting that response is because I feel so good dressing that way. And it's when I feel like, oh, I'm an adult now, I should be more minimalist, or I should have a neutral bedroom or whatever. That's when I get into trouble. And that's when I forget who I am. And yeah, I you're not being spark. your authentic self. And um, it's really easy to yeah. lose that spark and think that like, oh, now that I've done this, I need to be more like that. Like, That doesn't have to be true for you. You still get to be yourself through every stage of your life, whatever stage that is. Well, that makes me feel good because I, even for my husband, I feel like sometimes um, it was a bait and switch. Cause when he met me, I was in Jersey and I was all about the heels and the tight dresses. And now he's like, I'm in robes (laughs) and and, uh, ponytail on top of my head. Usually I put a little makeup on for these zooms because I kind of, you know, feel a little better when I watch them back when I have a little makeup on. I feel um, you. I know, but like, I like you're right. That's what that's your authentic self is to be hot. You know, my authentic mm-hmm. self is just to be more, um, I guess, natural, and that's yeah. what feels good and sexy to me. And that's what I guess self con- confidence is all about: is being authentic to who you are and not yeah. caring what it looks like to your you know, we wanted our significant others to find us attractive, but obviously they're with us for a reason. So they must like Mm -hmm. our our authentic selves. Um, But talk talk to me about like tips. Like you had a couple of, I was stalking your Instagram as I usually do just for good tips. Um, And you had one about acting hot. Mm -hmm. So I love this tip. This tip is so life-changing. So Uh, I had a reel where I said, you know, being hot is great, but acting hot will change your life. And that is about embodying that feeling. And even though you may not feel like you fit the, the standard definition of what is beautiful, what is sexy, what is hot, when you act that way, everything changes and people respond to you as if you are a hot person. And to me, that is really about you know, standing up tall. It's about looking people in the eye when they speak to you. You know, you're at the supermarket checkout or something and they're like, hi, how's your day or whatever. And you actually look at them and you give them a genuine answer. And it's about wearing the things that make you feel really good. Like, you know, you and I both live in Orange County and it's extremely low key here, but I go to the gym in like full face eyelashes, a hot pink outfit. (laughs) And like, I'm doing that because it feels good to me, not because I think I'm going to meet my future husband or something. I'm like, I just want to do what makes me authentically feel good. But I think it's so interesting that you talk about being really confident with your sexuality and your sensuality, because that's something that I have really had to work on historically. And it's something that I'm still working on. And 
I think it can be interesting, like what you see on Instagram might be different from how you are in the bedroom or just when you're at home with your partner. And so I have always found it really easy to be authentic online and in business and things like that, but harder to be authentic in my sensuality with a partner. So I think that what we see online or what's presented to us is not always the true picture. And, you know, that is something that I have had to really work on. And I think often when we meet a partner, they fall for us because we're being our authentic selves. And maybe we've been single for a while and we like got our shit going on and we're feeling really good. And I see a lot of women do this and I'm one of them. So I feel like I can speak to it with authority, but you meet someone, you fall in love with them. And then you start to think, oh, like, how can I adapt to be more like his dream woman? And what does he want? And how can I please him? And what activities like should we be doing that he will enjoy? And as we do that, and we shape shift, and we kind of chameleon, we really lose that authentic spark of who we were. And then they can't respond to us the way they did, because we've disappeared. Like, where did we go? And so for me, um, that's something I've done in a lot of relationships. And it's something that I'm really actively reclaiming that person I was before I met my partner so that I can get back to being that person. And that, that has been really challenging for me, but also the rediscovery has been really joyful and, um, and it works even better. So that's really yeah. good. It's funny. Cause I mean, obviously we're different ages. Um, how old are you now? Do you mind me? Asking? Uh, 38. Okay. So 30 is around the age when I started to really wake up and move out of my last marriage. Mm -hmm. um, and it took me quite a few years. Um, and I feel like that's when I started to like come home to who I actually authentically was. So mm. it's almost the opposite because I felt like I was playing this role of like what beautiful and sexy should be. And again, I, I'm, I, I don't think that's the, the reason why we got divorced. Um, but that's when I started to be like, I'm not wearing this, these heels anymore. I don't need to put, I don't want to put this makeup. So, I mean, it worked for me again. I'm a Pisces. I'm dreamy. I'm like more, you know, one with, with nature. It doesn't mean that everyone's that way, but some mm -hmm. people do the opposite where you may have gone in the other direction too much. And you're like, no, I want to be that 13 year old who found herself and put on these wings and put it out there and everything. For me, it mm -hmm. was kind of the opposite. And that's why I was saying, I feel bad. I, I sold Dave this, you know, bag of goods of this sexy, like, <laughs> you know, vixen, but what's so nice is like, maybe that's what attracted him to me. Um, but it was who I was at my core. And that's always the fact of a true soulmate who they're attracted to is like, they yeah. see the real beauty in you and vice versa. You know, um, that's why it's so great to like grow. And we'll talk about love kits because we've done this work together before. Yeah. And that's what it's really about is not only attracting who's right for you. And maybe sometimes it's at the time, but when you get the right one is growing together and really taking all the layers off um, and doing that as a team for each other. Mm. And, mm -hmm. you know, Dave played a different role when he met me and now his authentic self is really showing and it's making me love him even more on different layers. I never thought I could. And yeah. initially because of my program, it was like the flesh and the, I got a babe and all that, that attracted me, you know, that made mm -hmm. me say, as Terry Cole say, this is mating material. Um, but it's at his core of who he is, that's showing itself more and more every year we're together, because he married a witch. Um, that's, that's really making this union work. And he's not looking for maybe once in a while, he likes when you know, we go to Vegas, and I'll put on the heels and all that. But yeah. he he loves the authentic me. And that's really why we, we came together. Um, yeah. so Being your authentic self, no matter whether that's glam or it's chill or it's whatever is so important. And when is. you are really feeling good about yourself, you radiate that and it's magnetic. It's irresistible. Talk to me about mirror work. Cause I know I don't do mirror work. I do a version of it, mm -hmm. but I see that you not only do it, but you teach it in your vortex and everything else. So, mm -hmm. so mirror work is something I learned from Louise Hay, who was really the pioneer of the self-love movement. I love Louise Hay so much. And too. she really teaches a lot about, or taught a lot about 
having the ability to look in the mirror and say, I love you. You're so beautiful. I'm so proud of you. Like you're doing a great job. And often when people try to do this, they, they can't do it. It's very hard. They look away, they cry. It's very dramatic and very intense. And I have been studying tapping, which is like acupuncture without needles for 16 years now. And many of my most powerful tapping sessions that I have done have been in the mirror where I, you know, stand in front of the mirror with my clothes off and look in the, myself in the eyes. And I talk to myself about what's really going on. And I release my judgments and I love and accept and forgive myself no matter what's going on. And the ability to do that is, it really is the act of befriending yourself and being able to be your own cheerleader and your own pushy stage mother, you know, if that's the kind of encouragement that you need. And it's very powerful. And I think anyone who hasn't tried it should definitely give it a shot because if anything, it will tell you how connected you are to yourself, whether yeah, you can and- look yourself in the eye or not. And I talk about this when I talk about the love spells that I do is you need to love yourself the way you want to be loved. So if you Mm. look in the mirror and you see all your imperfections, you're going to attract someone who sees all your imperfections or someone who points them out or someone who doesn't see the true beauty in you. So I've learned, listen, I had six brothers growing up and there wasn't a time that they, I was the youngest of all 11 children, there was not a time that they did not like pass me by at the kitchen counter and smack my head and tell me how ugly I was. I was. <laughs> so I have like insecurity issues, thanks to my brothers. Um, <laughs> and in the past, I've attracted men that um, had made me feel maybe not so beautiful through infidelity or through mm-hmm. these other things, maybe feel like what's wrong with me. Mm-hmm. And I've learned the more beautiful I see myself and the more image of d- divine mother I see in myself, those are the people that meet that see it in me. So yeah. it's just so important that you do this kind of work, mirror work, whatever it is. And I know we're all hotter in ourselves and look at the cellular here and I could use lose this muffin top. I mean, there's some normalcy to that. I, I think mm-hmm. that, you know, if you look at yourself and, and say, um, you know, everything, a little thing is perfect. Of course, there's other, always things you could work on to feel healthier, to look more vibrant or what have you. But mm-hmm. overall, if you just see like the essence of who you are and the beauty in that, that's what everybody else is going to see. I remember, I think it may have been the retreat that we were on. And like you said, there were women of all ages there. Um, mm-hmm. That's what I loved about astrology is we were able to hear from the maiden to the crone, all of the different stages of life. Um, And there was one point that we kind of stripped down naked because it's a women's only retreat and like put some mud all over us. And I remember being so insecure in that moment. That's when I freaking look my best. Like that's when I was at my like peak, my body looked great, everything. And I was so ashamed to like be naked because, oh, my cellulite or whatever. And all these women of all ages just stripped down and I didn't look at their imperfections at all. I saw their beauty and their confidence and mm-hmm. they gave me, they were in the mirror for me to be more confident. And it was like the first time ever, I remember growing up gym class, I would like go into the bathroom and change. I was never that girl to like strip down in front of everybody. And I had a kick-ass body, <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> um, but it, again, mirrors, you, know, pe- you're, you will be the mirror and you will teach people how to love you. Yeah. So these little tips that you, know, you can get along the way, like mirror work, um, like your high vibe honey, honey, um, I see you do like a lot of S factor S classes. Talk to me about mm-hmm. how long you've been doing that, how that makes you feel. Oh my goodness. So I don't do S factor specifically. When I lived in New York city, I started going to a class called strip expertise. And then down here in orange County, I go to dollhouse fitness. It's in Orange and County. yeah, it's down in Oceanside. Actually, I guess that's orange County kind of. And, yeah. um, I love these classes because, like I said, I've, I'm working actively on my sensuality and my sexuality and really embracing it and feeling confident with it. So even though I have been taking classes like that for years, I have never showed any of that to a partner. That is strictly something that I do in a class. And sometimes I film mm. it and put it on Instagram. But for me, the idea of doing that in front of my partner is so terrifying and vulnerable I'm just not there yet so I'm working on it but I'm building up it's in a funny like I'm the opposite I would have zero problem doing that in front of my partner 
never had a problem, but to go to a class for me would be the scariest thing in the world. Amazing. Like, it's so interesting how different <laughs> everybody is. I don't know. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, but I love those classes because I can look myself in the eye and the mirror when I'm doing those and I can really feel sexy. And I think that I'm someone who has operated in a very like masculine state of mind for a long time. Like as I build my business and I lived in New York for 10 years and it's like total hustle grind mode and learning to get into my body and see myself as sexy and hot has been a huge voyage of discovery for me because it was never how I saw myself. I always saw myself as like, I'm smart and I'm funny and I'm cute. You know, like th those were my adjectives. And the older I get, the more I'm realizing that as women, we're very powerful and we have the power of sensuality and that that sensuality is a gift that we can give. And that when we don't give that gift, then our relationships just feel like friendships. And so yeah. it's really important that we can learn to be in that zone as much as possible and understand the power of the feminine, really. Yeah. And, you know, when you were talking about the things that you struggle with, that's the hit I was getting. You're too far into the masculine. Um, and both of them are healthy. Masculine energy is healthy. Feminine totally. energy is healthy. It's finding that sweet spot of the balance of the two is where mm -hmm. the magic really happens. I am the first to admit I am too far to the feminine. Always, always, always. It's something I'm working on. It's funny. My husband is such like an entrepreneur and that's his like state of mind and I'm the opposite, but that's what we work on as a couple is kind of meeting halfway in our energies with that. And I can learn from him and he can learn from me. I can learn from you. You can learn from me. Um, when there's an imbalance, that's when the struggle happens. Yeah. So what's happening energetically in this world right now is that struggle where the masculine was like too high. And this is where, why we got into this mess. You know, it, it used to be where the feminine, the divine energy, you know, eons ago was the stronger and the more respected. And somewhere along the way, just like everything else, the imbalance kind of came in right Right now we're starting to see, and I, I say this all the time, you know, the feminists that go too far and, you know, the, uh, not that I was, I mean, I was a part of the pussy hat movement and everything too. I mean, I didn't go to the marches, but when you take it too far, that's not good either. We mm -hmm. need the balance of both. And that's what I think is happening energetically now is like, there's going to be some imbalance of it. There's going to be figuring it out. And then soon um, we'll come to a happy meeting place. And I think that's this new earth that's emerging is this happy meeting place yeah. for all. I hope so too. And like the number of women that I meet who are so smart, so successful, they kill it in their careers, but their relationship is in shambles. And it's because it's not because you're strong and successful. Like that's beautiful. It's because you're so in your head that you're not emotionally open. You there's a God around your heart and there's like a moat and there's crocodiles and piranha in there. And you won't let people inside of you. You won't let them really see you and know you. And that makes relationships so challenging. And so that's, you know, I'm working on that. I'm writing about that. I'm teaching about that. It's the best way that I learn is by, you know, like teaching something and figuring it out for oh, myself. So it becomes the teacher. It's always the way. And you yeah. wouldn't be a great teacher if you didn't experience it yourself. You know, I totally um, agree. Like if you, if something's always been easy for you, you can't teach it because you don't understand you. It's natural to you. So really the best teachers are always the ones who have really struggled with something. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, I love your openness. Um, tell us what you're offering right now, because there's a, I can't keep up with you. That's what I mean. Like, I need to <laughs> learn from girls like you that are just like on it all and doing this and rolling out this next thing. And I'm here just chilling in my robe and being like, oh, it'll happen what it's supposed to. There needs I mean, to be some structure too. <laughs> I so. love that. I think we should like swap <laughs> lives for a day and just be like, okay, what does this feel like? I'm sure it'd be it's very like, educational. Well, what's, um, what's funny is one time I had broken out in like a rash all over me and my my doctor gave me like steroids of some sort and I was like cleaning like the corners of the house and, and I'm like I know now what my husband's brain is like like I'm living in his brain where I can't I couldn't stand so for a second what next let me take care of this let me do this and I was like what's happening <laughs> um so it really is our our 
and I went to Dr. Amen recently and learned a lot about my brain and my husband went and learned a lot about his brain to physically look at it and see the differences, but it doesn't mm -hmm. mean just because we're male and female, it's the imbalance, like I said, of the masculine and feminine, but I adore you and your rollouts. And I know you're going to continue to do that, <laughs> but once you connect to the flow of it all, it's going to be even more amazing. Um, yeah. And once I connect to the structure of it all, it's going to be even more amazing. Yeah. Um, but tell us what you have going on now. So everyone, we're going to put it in the show notes. Everyone will be a click away, but tell us what's going on. Sure. There's always so much, but I think the, the main thing that I do is high vibe honey. So every Sunday on Zoom, hundreds of women get together and we use tapping, which I mentioned, um, to heal all kinds of things, to feel more powerful, to feel limitless, to feel more confident, to feel more beautiful. And the coolest thing about tapping is that the proof is really in the pudding. Like when you do it, you feel the shift. And I've been doing it for 16 years. I used it to heal my eating disorder and asthma and all kinds of things that you would think would be life sentences. So that's the main thing that I'm doing. High vibe, honey. Um, I'm working on my book about feminine energy called The Venus Codes um, right now and teaching other people how to be tapping method like certified people and facilitators so there's a lot going on but I don't know I keep I don't know I, I reached a point in my career about two years ago where I had done so much and I was so proud of myself but there was something that was missing and through your love kit I manifested my quadruple Pisces boyfriend who I love so deeply that I really just want to find ways to spend more time with him. Like that's really what I want to do with my time. And as much as I love my career and I'm proud of it and I love helping women, there is just this part of me that is so drawn now to just being with him. And that's really where I want to put my energy. So it's an interesting shift for me, for sure. And that's okay. And that's okay. Yeah. That's what your intuition is telling you you need right now and needs to be nurtured. And PS, that's where you're going to find your divine energy in that relationship. Yeah, completely. Okay. So I am so excited for you. I'm so excited. We're going to talk more on your channels about the love kit. And the funny thing is, and this is what I tell everyone, because you know, everyone watching this probably knows about the love kits that I do. Um, you are ready because you that's why your love came in so quickly because you've been doing the work you've been doing it all um a lot of people this will set them these love kits will set them on their path to make them the person they need to be to attract their soulmate you've been doing this work for so many years and like i said you are ready to and you love yourself the way you want to be loved and that's why it happens so quick it doesn't mean everything's gonna be sunshine and roses all the time it's not don't yeah. think that either but you've found the guy that's giving you right now what you need to be your highest self and totally. um it, you know again sometimes these relationships will last forever sometimes they won't but the good thing is when you know you'll be in a relationship where god forbid and this is how i feel about dave and i freaking adore this guy I, like everything about it, I just look at him and I'm like, oh, he's so yummy in all different ways. He drives me crazy too. He's a Scorpio. So he's super intense. Um, <laughs> but we, I'm in such a healthy space with myself now that I know God forbid something goes wrong. And with this doesn't last forever. Like I know how fine I'm going to be. Mm -hmm. That tells me I'm with him because I want to be with him, not because mm. I need to be. So yeah. that's, that's what I'm talking about. There'll be hard times. There'll be highs and lows and and maybe you know everyone who's getting um these love kits and they the one is coming in just know it's happening for your highest and best and they are meeting where you or you're meeting yourself so yeah. i'm so proud of you i'm excited for you what's going Thank on you. and i'm always here to be your um mother nature divine <laughs> guide <laughs> Love that. Whenever, whenever you need to just, you know, take off your lashes, you let me know. And whenever I need a little boost to put mine on, I will, I know who to call. <laughs> Perfect. I love that. All right. Thank you, Bella, for being here. We'll definitely have you on again. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.